Young Show. Hello. Even though it's late, we still want to wish you a happy, happy Easter. Now, what kind of a woman are you? I mean, really, way down deep inside. We thought this was an intriguing question, especially since it was asked by a man. A very interesting character in our story tonight. And now we go back to the year 1877 in New England. Martha? 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 Oh, I'm sorry, sir. I didn't know you were home. Where is Mrs. Gray, Martha? Oh, she's gone out, sir. Out? In this weather? Out where, Martha? Well, I don't know, sir. She simply said she was going out for a walk. Well, she's in no condition to be going out for a walk. Every time I'm not here, out of the house, she doesn't take care of herself. Martha, you know I worry about her. I've asked you to help me. Yes, sir. I'm sorry. You also know the doctor has given explicit orders Mrs. Gray is never to go out alone. Yes, sir. I wish in the future you'd abide by those orders, Martha. Why won't you take care of yourself? I am quite all right, Robert. You're not all right. You're freezing. Please get Mrs. Uh, Grace some brandy. Martha. I do not care for any brandy. Thank you. Well, darling, why don't you go out? I simply have to have some fresh air. Oh, I know, but the doctor has told you time and again that it's just too cold. Excuse me, sir. Yes. But, uh, madam, should I get the brandy? Yes. I do not care for any brandy. Thank you. Yes. Martha, get Mrs. Gray a pot of tea. I do not care for any tea either. It's all right, Martha. Thank you. Well, darling, I, I worry about you. You don't seem to be able to take care of yourself, and I worry about you. Robert, having a baby is perfectly normal. Yes, I And know. I'm not an invalid either. No, I know. It's just that... Well, we have to take care of you. Now, promise me that you won't go out in this weather again. I am used to it. In England, we have cold winters, too, you know. <laughs> yes, I do know. You have to be patient with me. I love you such a lot. I know. I know. Yeah. I know. So forgive me if I'm like an old nag. <gasps> what is it, Johnny? Nothing. What's the matter? I don't. Help me to my thing. I, I, I don't feel. All right, I will. I don't feel good. Hey, Martha. <laughs> Martha. Oh, what you dizzy. What is it? Like? Martha, oh, you go get the doctor. I'll take oh. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Stop. Stop. You take I'll get the doctor. I'll get the doctor. Take her oh. over the room. Oh. Professor Gray. That's my wife. It's a girl. She's lovely. How's my wife? Get you something? Oh, uh, no. Thank you, Martha. Martha, what time is it? Well, it's after two o'clock. I, I think the baby's cutting a tooth. At any rate, she was fretting, so I warmed her some milk. Martha. Yes, sir. Would you wait just a moment? Sure. I would like to... I would like to speak to you, Father. I know that you've become quite fond of my daughter. Yes, I had. Well, I mean, after all, I've taken care of her since she was born, and well, she's such a lovely little thing, I could hardly help it. Yes, she is lovely. 
I want you to know how much I appreciate all you've done for her. I could never have managed without you. Not possibly. Martha, please sit down. Sir, if you're not satisfied with the way I... No, 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 no. That isn't the point. That isn't the point at all. Martha, please sit down. I suppose I should have anticipated the situation, but I've hardly been in any condition to think. However, that does not excuse me. I'm still responsible. If I've done something you don't like, please tell me. No, you've done a wonderful job, Martha. That isn't it at all. To be quite candid, people have been talking about us. It made me quite angry at first, but I suppose it was inevitable. I mean, the situation is rather awkward. Oh, I'm so sorry. They should know better. Well, unfortunately, we can't ignore it. But there's your reputation to consider and my position at the university. I'll be ready to leave whenever you say so. Uh, Martha, yes. uh, just a moment. I realize that you've become quite fond of my daughter. Well, I, I've tried very hard not to love her too much. Well, that's the very reason you've been good for her. You have loved her. Babies need love. Uh, Martha, please come and sit down. Yes, sir. Now, first of all, let's consider the people involved. There's the child. You knew her mother. I want the memory of her mother kept alive for her always. I want Alice to grow up to be exactly like her mother. As far as I'm concerned, I have the child and my work. And then, Martha, there's you. I don't know what you want out of life. But if staying with the child and having a home is enough, then there might be a solution. We could get married. I realize this is pretty sudden, Martha. But before you say anything, I wish you'd think it over carefully. It's worth considering, so please think about it. And when you have made up your mind, I wish you'd let me know. Would that be all, sir? Yes. Yes, thank you, Martha. Yes, sir. Oh, Professor Gray? Yes, Martha. I don't have to think about it. I've already made up my mind. It will be too hard for me to leave this house. Thank you, Martha. And good night. Good night, sir. seems to me that you would hesitate to even get to such a discussion. But if you had to have a, an intellectual argument, why choose a man like Professor Stevenson? Well, why don't you answer me, Martha? I didn't choose the subject, and I most certainly didn't want to offer my opinion, but Professor Stevenson insisted. Yes, so I noticed. It seemed vitally important to him that he understood everything that you felt. Oh, I, I, I don't think it was that. He's, he's just a kind man, and, well, he didn't want me to feel left out. Oh, I see. You think that I ignored you. I didn't say that. Why don't you let me take your coat? It's a dull evening. It was a terribly dull evening. I'm sorry if you were bored. I, I hope I didn't embarrass you. Well, I certainly didn't realize that you knew anything about poetry. Oh, that. Well.
Then I guess that I... I guess I don't really know you at all, do I? going to look more like her mother every day, don't you? Yes, sir. Where's my daughter? Oh, well, she's still at school. Today is the day she takes her French lesson. Oh, that's right. I forgot it was Thursday. Martha, is this uh, all the mail? Yes, it's all there. I, uh, I made a notation on your calendar. The faculty tea is next Saturday. Oh, good. Thank you, Martha. That tea... It's very important to me. Oh. Martha, I think perhaps you should get a new hat or a, a bonnet. You mean you want me to go with you? Yes, well, certainly. I mean, all the wives are expected to go. Oh, thank you. Martha, did you mail my letter to Cross and Company this morning? Yes, I did. I, I saw a very nice one at Madame Marie's just yesterday. A what? A hat, one I like very much. Oh, uh, good. Oh, Martha, why don't you ask Professor Matthew's wife to go with you? She has such excellent taste. Yes, all right. I will. Oh, Martha. Yes? Would you serve my tea upstairs, please? Yes, sir. Yes? Is this the residence of Professor Robert Gray? Yes, sir. Uh, my name is James Hughes, representing Carter and Livingston Solicitors, London. My card. Oh, thank you. I, I'm Mrs. Gray. Won't you come in? Thank you. I'll give your card to my husband. Oh, hello, darling. Oh, your papa's upstairs. You better hurry. Then you are not Mrs. Alice Winton Gray. Oh, no. No. no she died several years ago. But did Alice Winton Gray have a child? Oh, yes, sir. Uh, if you'll excuse me now, I'll call my husband. Yes. Gray, what can I do for you? I've come a long way to find you, Professor Gray. Oh? Well, won't you sit down, please? Give me your hat. Uh, thank you. Yes, thank you. Oh. Thank you, Martha. Uh, we, we, would you like to have your tea down here? Would you like to have tea, Mr. Uh, Hughes? Thank you. Thank you, Martha. Is the, uh, the delightful little child I almost met Alice Winton Gray's child? Well, yes, she is. Her mother died when she was born, Mr. Hughes. How old is she? She's seven. Uh, Professor Gray, uh, my firm is acting for the executors of an estate. If you can prove your marriage to Alice Winton, 
and the date of the child's birth. She will come into a very handsome legacy. The legacy amounts to about $22,000 in American money. $22,000 in American money? Well, then this must come from England. But I don't understand, Mr. Hughes. My first wife was English, but she told me she had no relatives. The money was left in Germany and not by a relative. Well, then who left? Uh, Mr. Franz Schiller. He died a few months ago. Schiller? That's the family that treated her, Mrs. Gray, so badly. Yes, I know. Uh, perhaps their conscience bothered them. Maybe that's why he left her the money. Uh, Mr. Schiller left the money not to Alice Winton, but to her first child. But why should Schiller have left money to my child? I mean, how did he even know of her existence? Alice Winton wrote a letter to Mr. Schiller. She wrote to him? When? Just before you were married, while she was still in Switzerland. But why should she have written to him at all? She didn't mention you by name, Professor. She said simply that she was marrying an American and leaving for the United States. She said she was marrying in order that her expected child might have a father. The legacy cannot be claimed until you have signed some papers, Professor, agreeing to certain conditions. Mr. Hughes, what are those conditions? The child is to use the name of Schiller. You mean she's to be told? Yes. The money is left in Germany, and she is to go to school there. Well, suppose those conditions are not met. What then? The money will remain in the estate to be divided between the other heirs. I'm sorry, Mrs. Gray. I didn't realize you didn't know. No, of course not. How could you? When must my husband sign those papers? I'm staying at the Ivy House. Would you have him get in touch with me there sometime tomorrow? In the meantime, there are the papers. Goodbye, Mrs. Gray. Goodbye. leave those papers to sign? Mr. Hughes is staying at the Ivy House. He wants you to get in touch with him tomorrow. Did he leave the papers to sign? Yes. They're on your desk. And why should I put it off? I'll sign them right now. Oh, please, you must not sign those papers. Why mustn't I sign them? Schiller provided for the child. 
$22,000 is a great deal of money. But you cannot agree to those conditions. You couldn't hurt your child that much. My child? Yes. She's been your child since the day she was born. My child. Robert, wait. I haven't finished. Martha, this does not concern you. I am not speaking for myself, but for the child. All the money in the world couldn't buy her what she has here. This is her home, and in it she has love and security. Oh, look, she lost her mother once. Is she going to lose her again? And her father as well? Now, that's enough, Martha. No, it is not enough. Sit down, please. I do not wish to talk about this. Please. May I remind you of something? When you asked me to marry you, you made me promise that I would raise that child to love the memory of her mother. Well, I've kept that promise. Yes, you have. I wish to God you hadn't. I wish to God you hadn't. I didn't know the truth then. And neither did you, or you couldn't possibly have gone through with this. Couldn't I? No, you couldn't possibly have lived in the shadow of Alice's memory all these years when one word could have destroyed it. You couldn't have. Couldn't I? Martha. Martha, did you know? Yes. How? That night, when you went to get the doctor and I was alone with her, she... she told me. Well, why didn't you tell me? I didn't want to hurt you. You didn't want to hurt well, me? Well, that is, I mean, any more than you already were. I felt if I told you that... you really would have been broken-hearted. Well, that was then, Martha. What about all these years? Why have you allowed me to stay in love with a woman who didn't love me? never loved me. If I had told you, you would have hated her and me and the child. Now, you yourself said that babies need love. You can't build love on hate. That's why I didn't tell you. Try to understand. It wouldn't have done any good. Your daughter is calling you. Answer. What kind of a woman are you? Find out. Papa. I'm coming, darling. This is from Isaiah. In quietness, in truthfulness, and in confidence shall be your strength. Well, good night. And we'll see you next week.